All right guys, so on today's vlog, I wanted to do something that you guys have been asking for for a little while. It's a seamless layered haircut. So what that really means to me is it's a 90 degree haircut, classic haircut from beauty school, but we're gonna go a little bit more modern with it. So we're gonna follow the head shape. That's what's gonna make it seamless because there'll be no weight lines within the haircut. This is our end result. So you can see there's a ton of layers in this haircut, but it lays nice and soft. You can't see any of the layers throughout the haircut. Um, we went through, we cleaned up the perimeter dry. So there's a lot of cool techniques in this video. So I hope you guys like it. Let me know in the comments below. Here we go with our step-by-step, -step. thanks. All right guys, so this is my standard sectioning breakdown for following the head shape and also uh, all the different curves in the head. So we're gonna go straight down the center, all the way down to the occipital bone, high occipital bone, and then down to behind the ear, following that occipital bone over. Then uh, we just take out the parietal ridge. So it gives us a, a quite a few different rectangles that will really focus on the different curves of the head. So now I'm gonna go through, cut a nice, solid, blunt, horizontal line at zero degrees uh, elevation to begin the haircut. What this is gonna do is give me a nice, strong baseline for uh, the 90 degree haircut that we're gonna go through and create. So just checking the lengths, make sure that we're good before we continue on the rest of the cut. Now I'm gonna take vertical sections. So you're gonna see I'm putting my elbow in the air. This isn't necessarily always the best thing to do because once your elbow's in the air, it's hard to stay consistent with elevation. But that's why I have the head tilted so far forward so that I'm not really stretching myself too far. Um, you gotta remember that that guest head moves, so just get the guest head in the right position to keep you as comfortable as possible during the haircut so that you stay as consistent as possible. So just working through, what you'll notice is I'll comb several times. So I'll take it at one angle, then I'll shift it up a little bit. I'm following that head shape around. I think there's so many different curves in the head. We're working on a curved surface. So every inch that I move is a different, it creates a different angle in the haircut. So you need to be shifting your arm up and following that head shape through. Now I'm not working with any over direction, so everything's coming straight out from the head. Um, I'm getting my guide from that previously cut section and just working uh, up the head shape. So the, the whole key is to create a completely round sphere over the top of the head. So whether I'm cutting vertical and working up the head shape or working vertical or horizontal across the head shape, I wanna make sure that my motion is directly out from the head at all times. That's what makes this such a difficult haircut and why they probably make it a state board uh, cosmetology haircut is because it, you really have to stay consistent with every part of the three-dimensional object that you're cutting uh, or the shape that you're cutting. So uh, just working through, uh, notice again that I just keep combing, I keep elevating it all the way up the head shape. Now, I'm not saying that this is the standard. I don't really remember exactly the sectioning for the state board. I believe it was only four sections. Um, this is definitely more than that. So this is not a, a video to help you pass that state board test, but uh, it is a video to help you with technique and following the head shape. So a lot of you guys requested you wanted to see seamless layers. So um, the way that you see seamless layers to make sure that you stay on that 90 degree pattern up the head shape. A lot of people start to drop their elbow, start to drop their elevation. So they end up with that heavy ledge around the top layer of the haircut. And that's why it doesn't look seamless like you guys are talking about. So um, just going through, uh, you're going to notice that See, look at my finger angle compared to the head shape. So I'm working right around the crown area and my finger angle is exactly following what the head shape looks like. So as I shift through, um, you'll notice that I also hold the scissor differently when I get this high with the elevation. I used to kink my wrist a lot uh, when I first started cutting hair and even when I first started making videos. So when you look back at some of the videos, um, I would kink my wrist a lot. Once Now, just like that actually. So still working on that habit. Um, but as I go through, uh, you'll notice that in my brain, I try to go off of autopilot and shift my wrist and you'll see it happen a lot to uh, just make sure that I'm not bending my wrist so much as I'm cutting. All right. So right there you can see how my wrist straightened out and I just used my thumb halfway in the scissor to do my cutting. So again, over direction straight out from the head, working that, you wanna make sure that you don't over direct too far because that's gonna totally throw off the entire shape. Because think about if, if I were to over direct this back and push more weight and length forward, then the rest of the haircut's gonna be messed up because 
um, I push that weight forward. So my guide's going to get longer and longer. So then all of a sudden you have one side of the haircut longer than the other one. Another thing that I noticed about this haircut when I was filming it is how many times I look up because I'm filming this by myself. So I'm constantly looking at the camera to make sure uh, when I'm doing a longer haircut that my hands are in the frame of the camera. So uh, <laughs> this was an extra difficult haircut for me because it's you have to stay so precise with where you're overdirecting, how you're elevating the hair, and then also is your hand in frame which makes it, you know, a little bit more difficult. But just working through, um, it, you could take it like pie-shaped sections throughout the crown area um, just to make sure that I'm not... Because if you keep taking vertical sections, sometimes you want to follow those vertical sections. So just working that pie-shaped section coming straight out from where it lives. Another thing I noticed that I think this is a good thing about filming yourself cutting hair, but that I, I really take strong parting. So um, on both sides of the section. So it's not like I'm just scooping up hair and pulling it to a, a guide, which is made up of a lot of different parts of the head. I really section off. I comb one side and then I comb the other side to make sure I get nice, clean uh, partings so that I get a nice clean guideline. Um, I think a lot of people will throw together a lot of hair and it diffuses your guideline. So then you get lost in the haircut, but then you, you maybe you're running behind in the salon and then you just go ahead and cut it and then you don't get the result that you wanted. You want to make sure that um, if you stay clean with everything, it may seem like it takes longer, but you never have to go back and fix your mistakes. So uh, just try to stay really clean with all of your sections. All right, so now I'm moving into the side panel of the haircut. I'm gonna take my guide from the previously cut section. So all of that should be at 90 degrees. If you're not seeing that 90 degree angle, then I would definitely go back and check and figure out what happened. So I just use that 90 degree angle and I follow it up the head shape. So again, this is gonna be about three different comb, uh, combs throughout the section. I don't even know if combs is a word, but whatever. Um, so we're going through and I'm cutting and just combing, shifting up, taking off every one of those little corners. Those little corners that you see in that section, if you don't go through and elevate it all the way through, are what are going to be the weight line that you're going to see in the haircut. And that's why you don't get a seamless layer haircut or why you get heavy parts of the cut that you're working on. Again, this is just straight out from the head. So no over direction. Um, within this part of the haircut. Now, I know that this is like a, a really standard haircut that you do learn uh, in school. And some of you guys have been doing hair for 20, 30 years. Uh, some of you guys are just beginning. What I would say to really take from this cut and why I wanted to do it was because first off, you guys were asking for a seamless layered cut. And I don't know if you realize that a 90 degree cut is that. But also, um, as you're working through, just really understanding how much head shape plays a role in what your layers are going to look like. So it really has nothing to do when, when we talk about uh, some people learn in school that, that angles are based on a flat plane, but you're not working on a flat plane. You're working on a round surface. So you really need to take every angle into consideration uh, as you're moving up your head shape. So now we're working through the top. So I just take out one of those rectangle sections and I'm going to work my way all the way up. Now, pretty much straight up from the head shape. But again, that's still 90 degrees to me. Um, in school, you learn maybe that's 180 degrees. That would be when they're talking about working on a flat plane. But when I'm talking about working straight off of a head shape, that's creating a 90 degree angle to me. So um, just working up the head shape, creating that 90 degrees and creating those soft layers throughout um, the head. Now, the cool part about this is if you go through this whole haircut, you take these small sections, you follow your guideline, what you're going to see at the end of the cut uh, when I go to connect this whole thing together is that all of these layers that I'm creating now are going to match up perfectly to the other side. And that's how you know that you stayed consistent throughout the whole haircut. It's kind of one of those things for me. I, I love um, getting through a haircut and then checking it and and seeing that it's as perfect as I could have gotten it, um, you know, that doesn't always happen. So, um, you know, it's, it's a cool feeling to know that you stayed consistent throughout an entire haircut. So just shifting. Um, now we're going to go through the other side. 
So the one thing I want to talk about on this, you'll notice that um, one half of the side, so on the right side of the haircut, I'm behind the head cutting. And then on the left-hand side of the haircut, I'm in front of the head cutting. The reason for that is it goes back to the guideline thing that I talk about in every video. So if you haven't heard that spiel yet, it's on every single video that I do. But um, you want to push the new hair to the guideline. So my guideline is coming from the back. So I'm combing the hair from the front pushing it to the guide in the back. I never want to pull my guide to the new hair because if I pull my guide from where it lives, it becomes shorter and I will cut the hair shorter. You'll end up with a whole entire side of the haircut shorter. So just standing in front of the head keeps me consistent with my combing. You can see on the top section right there, I'm taking these sections up and they match perfectly to the other side. So I kind of follow through to the other side just to check it. Um, so, so you can see as I'm combing, comb again, and then I comb one more time to connect those two sides together. So that is uh, that part of the haircut. Now we're going to go through, iron it out with our Vibra Straight Iron. Um, worked it through. For some reason, I didn't film the blow dry, but the blow dry was a standard flat wrap. So you didn't miss anything there. And if you want to know about that blow dry, it's definitely on a lot of the other videos that I've done. So you can see the 90 degree haircut doesn't leave the, the most flattering outer perimeter. So what I'm going to do is go through and uh, iron out the hair and then I'm going to go around and, and clean up the perimeter, create the perimeter line that I'm looking for. So even though I did cut the base uh, at the very beginning of the haircut, that was really just to create a guideline. Now I'm going to go through um, and lighten up and create the perimeter that I was looking for in the, in the end result of the haircut. So finishing up with some point cutting, working all the way around the crown area. Really, I'm just point cutting the top area of the haircut because, again, we're working on creating soft layers throughout the cut. So just taking out a little bit of that density, not changing the line whatsoever. So I'm keeping the, the scissor very vertical. This is my Mizutani uh, DB20 scissor. Actually, no, this is the Mizutani Puffin. I use the DB20 for all the precision cutting. Now I'm using my dry cutting scissor, which is the Mizutani Puffin 5.5-inch, uh, which I really love a short blade on my dry cutting scissor, and I just go through and soften that. Now I'm going to use the Puffin, and I'm going to create this angle. So you can see uh, that angle that the 90-degree haircut created naturally, um, but now I want to go through and just soften it around the face. Just connecting those lines together. So I saw the point where I wanted to connect it in the back. So I just start using the tip of the scissor, going through and connecting those two points. Uh, same thing in the back. So where it's soft from the layering, I wanted to have a little bit more of a blunt line. I love having nice solid blunt lines in a haircut as long as it doesn't look super heavy. Um, so just go through using the point of the scissor, cleaning up that line uh, to finish it off. And then the last thing that I'm going to do is take my clipper. This is the Andis uh, Supra, I think it's ZR scissor that they sent to us, but I love it. It's cordless, so I use it a lot just for cleaning up. So I cut the entire perimeter with the scissor, but sometimes when I want a nice blunt line, I use the uh, clipper just to uh, fine-tune it a bit and create those nice hard lines throughout the outer perimeter of the haircut. All right, so that's the end result, guys. You can see there's it's seamless layers, no lines, uh, great strong line in the outer perimeter that we created. Um, let me know in the comments below how long it's been since you guys have done a 90 degree haircut. Hope you enjoyed this one. All right, guys, if you like our 90 degree haircut, make sure you hit that like button, hit the share button. As always, I appreciate all of your guys' support. Check out everything we have to offer on freesaloneducation.com. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next video.